Hello. Today on the English Experience, we're going to talk about phrasal verbs. I love phrasal verbs, but sometimes they're a bit frustrating for those who are learning English, but still very important. And if you want to be able to speak in a natural and less formal way, you're going to have to learn to use phrasal verbs. Take this for example. After my work was complete, I went and bought a pizza, then returned to my home. That's a good sentence, right? But with phrasal verbs, we can say it in this way. After I got off work, I went and picked up a pizza and went back home. Much simpler, right? Much more simple, much less formal. So today we're gonna look at 15 phrasal verbs that help us to talk about daily routine. So get your, uh, get your notebooks and your ink pens ready. I think I have an ink pen. <laughs> get your notebook and your ink pen and take some notes because you will be able to use these phrasal ver verbs to talk about your daily routine. Ready? Let's get started. Let's start from the beginning, shall we? What is the first thing that we do in the morning? Well, first, you have to wake up. That is our first phrasal verb, wake up. And it simply means to stop sleeping. So in the morning, you are asleep and then you wake up. So that's our first phrasal verb. I usually wake up at about 6.30 a.m., very early. What time do you wake up? After you wake up, what is the next thing that you must do? Well, you have to leave your bed, right? So our next phrasal verb is get up. Okay, you have to get up. So waking up is different from getting up because when you get up, you have to move your body. You have to change the position of your body to get up. So at night, you are lying on the bed, but after you wake up, you have to get up, right? Wake up, then get up. As I mentioned, I usually wake up at about 6.30 a.m., but I don't get up until about 7.15 because I like to stay in bed and look at my phone. I know, it's a bad habit. Anyways, now we've learned our first two phrasal verbs. Wake up and get up. Our next, what do we need to do next? Well, I don't know about you, but after I get up, I usually go into the bathroom. So that's our next phrasal verb, to go into. So you go into the bathroom and what do you do? Well, you usually wash your face, right? Brush your teeth, maybe you take a shower or a bath. And so the phrasal verb that we use to talk about all of those things is wash up. Wash up means to clean your face, clean your hands, clean your body. So instead of saying in the morning, I clean my face, I clean my body, I brush my teeth, we can use one phrasal verb that means all those things and say, I wash up. I wake up, I get up, I go into the bathroom, and wash up. Okay, okay, now we're making some progress in our morning. Let's look at another phrasal verb. What is next? What do we do after we've washed up? Well, usually we have to find some clothes, right? So, look for. That's our next phrasal verb. Now we have to look for something to wear. 
we have to look for some clothes to wear. That usually takes me a little bit of time. I have to be honest. So after you look for some clothes and you find what you will wear, well then you have to put on your clothing. You have to put it on. You have to put on your shirt. You have to put on your pants or your dress. So I look for clothes, then I find something really cute to wear, then I put it on. Okay, what's next? Well, after I've put on my clothes, it's time to go to work, right? So I leave my house and go to work, but on the way, I stop by McDonald's to buy coffee for my colleagues. So, stop by. That's another phrasal verb, and we just use it to talk about making a, a very fast or a, a, a brief stop at a location. Maybe you're going here, but on the way, you stop by another location, and then you carry on. Stop by. So, on the way to work, I stopped by McDonald's and then I picked up coffee for all of my colleagues. So pick up is a common phrasal verb. We use it often and it just means to take something from one location and bring it with you to another. So we can use it to talk about people or we can use it to talk about things. So I can pick up a pizza. I can pick up some coffee for my colleagues at work. I can pick up my nephew from school. So anytime that you retrieve something or you take something with you, you're picking it up. So I brought the coffee to all of my colleagues at work. They were so happy. And I had a normal day at work. It was very productive. We came up with a way to cut back costs, production costs. Okay, now we've got a couple of phrasal verbs in this sentence. The first, to come up with. It means to have an idea, okay? So maybe there is a problem and you have to find a solution or come up with a solution. So, we came up with a way to cut back production costs. Cut back. That is another one of our um, phrasal verbs. And this one is a little more simple because it, mean, it just kind of gives the idea of reducing, right? So, if I cut back on eating sugar, that means I'm not going to eat as much sugar. I'm going to reduce the amount of sugar. So if I cut back production costs, that means that we're going to spend less money on production. You get the idea. So good day at work. Uh, we came up with a way to cut back production costs. Sounds very um, productive, yeah? All right, so fantastic. So after that, uh, I got off at five. So get off, that's another phrasal verb, and it means to quit working or to stop working, okay? So at the end of each day, most people have a time when they usually get off. Maybe you get off at 4.30 p.m. or 5 o'clock p.m. or 6 p.m. every day, okay? So you could say, I get off at five. Yesterday, I had to stay late and I didn't get off until seven. So that's another phrasal verb that we can use to talk about the time when we finish work for the day. After work, I came home and I whipped up something for dinner. That's another phrasal verb, to whip up something. And we actually usually just use that uh, to refer to food. We're always, if you're talking about whipping something up in the kitchen, 
Oh yeah, we're talking food. So we use that phrasal verb mainly to describe cooking something or to say that I quickly cook something uh, in the kitchen, right? So I whip up some dinner, whip up something to eat, and um, yeah, I have dinner after, after I eat my dinner, well, what needs to be done next? Then we have to clean up. That's our next phrasal verb, clean up. So cleaning up, it's, um, it's similar to washing up, except it's for your house, right? So um, you don't have to say, I wash my dishes, I wipe my table, I um, sweep my floor. You can just say, I clean up. After I eat dinner, I clean up my kitchen. I cleaned up the kitchen. Okay, so now we've eaten, the kitchen is clean. What is next on our list? Ah, okay, now we get a moment to rest, right? So, sit down. That's another phrasal verb, to sit down. And it's just to change your position from standing to sitting, okay? So after the kitchen was clean, I sat down to watch Netflix. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds like a good idea. We eat and then we sit down and watch Netflix. After watching uh, a series on Netflix, I go into the bedroom and then um, we talked about the phrasal verb put on, right? In the morning, we have to put on clothing. Well, at night, we have to take it off, right? We have to take those things off. And that is the opposite phrasal verb for put on. So you put on and you take off. I go into the room and take off my clothes from work and then I put on my pajamas. I put on something comfortable so that I can sleep, right? And after you do that, well, you can get in the bed. Get in the bed and go back to sleep. And that is a full day. And that is, oh my goodness, five, 10, 15 phrasal verbs that we just learned to help us talk about daily routine. And I'm going to try to do several of these phrasal verb sessions because I think that these are a very big challenge for language learners. They're difficult, but oh so necessary. So we gotta learn them. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like button, subscribe, share with your friends, share with others who are trying to learn English and we'll continue this journey together. See you next time. Bye.